Um. Okay. I guess I should set some ground rules, namely what I think of the series so far, because Fallout is one of those series only discussed in hindsight for some reason. Fallout 1 and 2 are old. Fallout 3 isn't quite terrible, but is really, really dumb and pandering for a lot of it. And New Vegas is probably the best RPG of the last decade. I feel the need to mention this because a lot of Fallout 4's strengths and weaknesses are going to be dependent on what you thought of the last two. So, yes, I'm one of those snobs who believes New Vegas' amazing writing and structure supersede the fact it was in the oven for less than two years. Fallout 3 probably had a better grasp of the survivalist mentality of the series, even though it's New Vegas that had the hunger and first mechanics, but yeah, I'm on Team Obsidian. So what was I expecting from the new Bethesda game? Well, I played Oblivion again recently and that still held my interest after 9 years, so I was optimistic. Firing up a new game, I decided to model my character after Gundam Tanaka. And by that I mean I picked the closest preset face and gave him a scar. Gundam is ex-military and, presumably through these connections, is given an invitation by a door-to-door -door salesman to bunker down in a vault in case nuclear war breaks out, which it does two minutes after signing the papers. But oh no, it turns out the vault was an experiment on cryogenic stasis as he falls asleep for roughly 200 years, and somewhere within that time span his wife is killed and his son Sean is kidnapped. Hmm, should he be called Ethan Mars instead? And so Ethan sets off to explore the wastes, make friends and find his son. And already I'm a bit torn, Fallout 3's intro was great the first time you played through it, but not so much any other time, so I guess I'm glad it takes less than an hour to start the game, but things move a bit too quickly. It's hard to get a sense of who your family is in the short time you know them, which almost makes your wife's death a literal use of woman in a fridge. I guess the shoe would be on the other foot if you decided to play as Madison Page, but more to the point, I think you're expected to know all about Fallout at this point, which seems like a missed opportunity to flesh out what they call the old world. Anyway, Ethan runs across his old robot buddy from home, who sends him off to the city of Concord, where he finds the last remnants of the Minutemen. In order to clear out the raiders there, you have to find your set of power armor and a minigun and tear them apart. I've read around and it seems a lot of people find this to be a very weak part of the game, and in hindsight, because hindsight is the context under which Fallout is discussed, remember, I would agree. As a tutorial, this stretch gets you up to speed on the mechanics of the game very well, but it's too much of a power trip. After saving everyone and killing a death claw with a pistol because I stupidly used up all my minigun ammo, I dragged everyone to the decrepit town of Sanctuary, where I dumped my power armor and never used it again. Also, we started forming an actual town or something, I don't know. If I were to continue making this review out to be a play-by-play, -play, then discussing town building would be very hard, because it doesn't really get interesting until you start being able to build and own the really expensive stuff. Everything being grafted onto the in-game engine means both the physical placement of objects and mechanical activations are a bit iffy. So when it came time to build my own house, I just chickened out and used a prefab. Assigning settlers to various tasks is also quite baffling because you have to find the people, click on them, and then click on the asset you want to assign them to. But when it does work and when you can start investing in the major facilities, it can be very cool to see a town prosper with 17 stores. And props if you can do this with multiple towns, I didn't, Ethan has his own things to worry about. The main quest progression is, in some respects, quite similar to the way Fallout 3 handled it. Your central objective is to find your relative by following a trail of little missions that each give you a clue, and the early game is comprised of introducing yourself to most of the major settlements and crawling through a dungeon to get something for them. In fact, it's scarily like Fallout 3, in that it's most uninteresting and you're not gonna know which quests you can skip until a second run through. When I got near the major city towards the south of the map and I had to fight some super mutants, I cringed. Never mind all the people bitching about the outdated engine. Seven years down the line and the mission design hasn't moved on? It is a shame that the mission and level design hasn't evolved because the actual combat has. Fallout 3 and even New Vegas had absolutely no finesse to them. Everything was clunky and this was obvious in how the only way to hit anything was to use vats. So combat Combat consisted of telling the game to shoot someone in the head, waiting until your meat recharged, and doing it all over. This is dramatically improved in Fallout 4. Now there's an actual sense of fluidity. Guns have good senses of power and recoil, it's all just a lot better. In fact, I would go as far as to say combat was a lot of fun in parts. Enemy AI is pretty decent. Human enemies will actively use cover, move around, throw grenades to flush you out, and they're very perceptive. In fact, they might have been too perceptive, because there are times they can shoot you across the map with basic laser rifles. Sheesh, is this a perfect dark combat simulator or something? And naturally, this being a Bethesda title, the AI is not foolproof, particularly when it comes to your partners. 
Something else that elevates the combat is the crafting system. It hits that perfect balance between ease of use and malleability. There are only around 5 parts to each gun you can change and each part only has around 10 variants maximum, but given the hefty amount of different ammo available, that's really all the game needs. Not only are guns still heavily customizable, they're a good measure for your strength parameters because some upgrades can only be used if you have a certain level up perk. Crafting upgrades also takes resources away from your town building, which is a really interesting dynamic that heightens the atmosphere of scarcity. Because I had to pick and choose between my upgrades, I got really invested in my arsenal. In fact, I took it way too far at one point. But that scarcity also extends to all manner of resources, including ammo and health supplies. So even though I was leveling up my character, building up my arsenal, unlocking all manner of ass-kicking perks, I rarely felt like I wasn't a few mistakes away from things going horribly wrong. And when I was on the last stim pack scrambling to survive, I have to say things got very tense and exciting. But the line between a situation being tense and it being annoying is a thin one that Fallout 4 crossed more than I would like to admit. The big upset was this big battle right here. After a rather short quest to build some artillery, I was almost immediately thrust into a massive firefight against a huge robot army, with like, three stim packs. I was up creek. The battle itself took the better part of 45 minutes, and I literally had to leave and come back to go to the city and sell shit just for some ammo. I have to ponder how that went down amongst the Minutemen who were there at the time. And after that I was still getting my ass kicked, so much so that I was faced with a dilemma. Reload an hour old save and better prepare myself for a battle I couldn't have possibly known was coming, or turn the difficulty down for this one fight and win at the complete cost of my dignity. So I hope you understand when I say that for as much as I enjoyed the difficulty of the campaign in general, it did not need to be this hard. As for how the campaign itself evolves, yeah, it does get better, but it's stagnant for a very long time indeed. It's a long time before the story really develops a pulse. In Fallout 3, you had the first major skirmish against the Super Mutants, the trip into Tranquility Lane, the Enclave. It might have been shallow overall, but it had a lot of set pieces to keep the blood pumping. New Vegas is slow for a while, but once you hit the city itself, everything changes. For the record, what really made New Vegas a home run for me was that once you got introduced to the idea of tangible civilization, your methods for solving problems increased in number dramatically, and it became a much more interesting game because of it. And this is even before delving into the multifaceted faction war that drove the story beyond a simple revenge plot. God damn, I loved New Vegas. <coughs> Fallout 4 takes its sweet time getting to any sort of real establishing moment. A question I had at the back of my mind while playing was, so what happens after I get my son back? What will there be to do then? Then, there's this little mid-campaign addendum, and it's at that point things start getting quite interesting. To be honest, the actual plot twist itself isn't that hard to guess if you pay enough attention to the opening, although it's still mired in some secrecy. But after you discover this, the questline opens up and takes a shot at a divergent main campaign. The scope of the story opens up and you can find yourself slyly playing several sides against each other. Several mission branches may open and close depending on who you befriend, and more importantly, when. Admittedly, I'm kind of taking a stab in the dark at this. I got two missions into one party's questline, then backed out and was refused contact with them ever again, at which point the campaign settled right back into tedium as I had to complete a bunch of randomly generated quests to build up an army. But near as I can tell, it was either that or do work for the Brotherhood of Steel, which I never want to do again after Fallout 3 painted them as the good guys. Fallout 4 is a bit more ambiguous at least. While they all have different motives, every party seems to be able to cut throat and peaceful negotiations never seem to cross anyone's mind. But I liked that. I liked that the game had the intelligence to drop hints that you might not be doing the right thing, or at least with any sort of tact. And I enjoyed dipping my feet a little into playing both sides. It'll be interesting to see what the wider community comes up with when it comes time to see the different flavours of ending you can get. But that's probably the final nail in the... I don't want to say coffin. I don't know what to say. The game doesn't really have an ending, at least not in the direction I took things. The final battle was well telegraphed and suitably explodey, but the actual plot was driven back down to a simple rescue and revenge story, and the game actually continues after the final cutscene. I understand this is probably to give credence to the town building bits, but there's no sense of punctuation, so when I beat the game, all I could say was... Um... Okay? I certainly can't say Fallout 4 was bad, in fact it's far less clunky than Fallout 3, and the gameplay actually accommodates the design of the story, but that design isn't any more advanced aside from a few surprising areas. Playing this just reminded me how goddamn good of a game New Vegas is, and the combat in that is miles worse. It just goes to show that good writing, design, pacing and structure can really elevate a title, and while the combat was good in this, it wasn't like Halo or anything. I don't want to say how the fandom will look back on this game in hindsight, because that's the only 
only context Fallout is disgust in, but if I had to take a guess, I'd say the reaction would be, New Vegas is still king. If this new branch of Fallout games can be likened in quality to anything, it would be the old Star Wars trilogy. And yes, I am saying I find A New Hope worse than Jedi. And now I feel like I've met my cross-referential quota. I hope you're not going to be too upset I didn't do too many side quests. I did a number, mind, but I wanted to get my views in on the main quest before my opinion was devoured by the next fan war over which game is better, because war... War never changes, I guess.